Did you know that President Richard Nixon played a role in popularizing General Tso's chicken in the U.S.? Or that the popular Chinese dish was not born in China? To learn more of the untold truth of General Tso's chicken, keep watching. General Zhou Zeng Tang was actually a political administrator, nobleman, and military leader born in the early 1800s in Hunan, China. He fought to suppress the rebellions and uprisings that threatened to topple the imperial government at the time, with methods both tactically brutal and in other cases diplomatically brilliant. Whether it was overseeing the conquest of central China, or using taxation and the implementation of Western technology to quiet dissidents, his methods earned him respect both among the powerful and the people. All in all, the real General So was a fierce traditionalist, fighting for the preservation of Chinese culture and heritage. So it is both ironic and in some ways fitting that most of the world would come to know his name through a dish that only loosely resembles the food from his region. After all, most cuisine from Hunan shies away from the blending of sweet and savory flavors. Perhaps the most influential force in the explosion of Chinese restaurants was the racist law intended to squash Chinese immigration, the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882. The act effectively stopped any new immigrants from coming to the U.S., even denying re-entry to legal immigrants who had returned home for a visit, with a few key exceptions for merchant visas. Merchant visas allowed certain businessmen to travel and even bring employees with them into the country. Restaurants just so happened to be on that list of approved merchants. At the time of the law's passing, a large portion of the 300,000 Chinese immigrants living in America was based in San Francisco. Rather than compete with one another for the few businesses afforded to them within the law, a large number of immigrants spread across the country. The number of Chinese restaurants doubled between 1910 and 1920, and doubled again between 1920 and 1930, a restaurant surge that paved the way for the invention of all of our Chinese takeout cult classics. Long before General Tso's chicken made it to the U.S. menus, it was born in Taiwan at the restaurant of Chef Peng Chung Kui, a former banquet chef for the Chinese nationalist government, Chairman Mao's revolution forced Peng into exile in Taiwan from his home province of Hunan. Craving the taste of home, Peng began riffing on Hunanese-style dishes, giving them his own spin and making them more accessible to non-Hunanese diners. One such creation featured crispy chunks of breaded chicken flash-fried with spicy peppers, vinegar, ginger, and soy sauce, making for a tangy, spicy dish that was neither traditional nor completely unfamiliar. He called it Zhou Zeng Thang Chicken, the second most famous general from Hunan right behind Mao, who had pushed Peng into exile. Peng claims to have named the dish when preparing it for visiting U.S. Admiral Arthur Radford in 1952. In his own way, Peng used the dish as both a tribute to a Hunanese hero and a subtle criticism of the revolution. When Richard Nixon visited China in 1972, it was the first time a president had visited China since the Communist Revolution in 1949. We have today seen the progress of modern China. Anti-Chinese sentiment had been high since the Korean War, leaving Chinese restaurants in the lurch. But with news reports revolving around a series of state dinners, Americans watched as the president indulged in foreign meals they'd never even heard of. By the following evening, a Chinese restaurant in Manhattan had recreated the entire menu, dish by dish, for their customers. Overnight, the demand for Chinese food skyrocketed. The demand for Peking duck, Nixon's favorite dish of the trip, went from being one of the least popular dishes in American Chinese restaurants to one of their best sellers. While most of the Chinese-American restaurants in the U.S. served largely Americanized versions of Chinese food, the Nixon-inspired boom gave Chinese chefs the chance to feature more traditional dishes, as well as test out new ideas. It's no coincidence that General Tso's chicken appeared on the menu that same year, riding on the tails of an American wave of interest in Chinese cuisine. Perhaps one of the savviest business people to ride the wave of the Chinese restaurant boom following Nixon's diplomatic dinners was Michael Tung. With numerous restaurants to his name, he sent his head chef T.T. Wang to Taiwan to recruit workers and to pick up new recipes. It just so happened he sent him at the same time as a rival New York chef David Kay made his journey to Peng's restaurant. Both chefs specialized in Hunanese cuisine, and Peng was the man to learn from at the time. Additionally, both returned to their restaurants with strikingly similar menus to Peng's in Taiwan, and both brought their own riffs on Zhou Zhang Thang chicken. Tung stuck closely to the original flavor, tangy and sour, but added mushrooms, poison sauce, and water chestnuts. 
Wang's reinvention of the dish proved to be the winner of the day, making the chicken noticeably crispier and the sauce considerably sweeter. Both chefs' restaurants won critical acclaim and four-star New York Times reviews. But it was Wang's version of the dish that would come to be the standard General Tso's recipe eaten around the country. I'll try this for sure again next time. Perhaps it was Chef Lucas Sin who put it best when talking to author Francis Lam on an episode of Splendid Table. They were talking about Chinese takeout food when Sin said, I am so sick and tired of people telling me that this Chinese food made by Chinese Americans for the last 100 to 200 years is inauthentic. It's such a silly way to characterize a cuisine that spurred on generations of immigration. While the authenticity police might take umbrage at the very idea of General So's chicken, it would be disingenuous to call it inauthentic. While it may not be traditional Hunanese food as they would eat it in Hunan, it was made by a chef from Hunan. Not only that, it was made for the express purpose of sharing Hunanese-style food with a foreigner, Admiral Radford, and even the name seems to have been Chef Peng's way of sharing his culture with his neighbors while in exile and beyond. This seems to be exactly what General So's Chicken will continue to do for hundreds of Chinese-American chefs around the U.S. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite dishes are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.